What's going on Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. I know, I know, Mr. Inconsistent. To be honest with you, I've got no real reason for it, right? I've kind of just been taking the time to just relax, man. Relax, enjoy my video games, work out, train, study, all that type of normal stuff, right? So I've just been in a place mentally of zen. Uh, so yeah, but you know, look, we're back, man. We're doing this YouTube thing. You know, I appreciate you guys. People are still liking. They're still um, subscribing. You know, thank you to all the warriors, everybody that is still supporting. I really appreciate it. And to be honest with you, this is my favorite time of the year anyway, yeah? One of the blessings of being born on the 15th of June, yeah, that's my birthday, is I always get a blockbuster movie. Or I get a godlike video game deluge of content. And this year, no different. As far as I'm concerned, today. Is the start of E3, yeah, or the summer tsunami of gaming information, shall we call it? Because let's be honest, E3 is dead, right? The only thing that um, E3 really gave us that was really worth anything is a time of the year, which is June, my birthday month. And we're about to get into it. We're going to talk about all the things that I want and I'm hoping to see from E3, right? So today we have Ubisoft forward their E3 2021 presentation. Yeah, and that's going to happen from when I'm starting to do this video in real time. Yeah, it is well. That's not point is it but let me say it anyway it's two hours from when the ubisoft press conference is about to happen in the uk and it's going to happen in the uk at 8 p.m so what i'm personally expecting from ubisoft i'm not going to talk about the dlc or anything that is currently out like you know division or the assassin's creed valhalla I'm not really, oh, you know, Watch Dogs Legion. I don't really want to talk about that stuff. I want to talk about brand new stuff, yeah? And what I'm excited for is Far Cry 6. I want to see more about of that game. I want to hear more about it. Like, I look at that game and I can't see one reason why I wouldn't get that game. That game looks godlike. You know, I like the characters, the worlds, you know, the combat. The, the talk, the banter, the story should be interesting. Yeah, mate, I'm on it. I'm on it, so I'm very, very interested in that game. So, yeah, just excited to see what's going to happen there. And my wish to see out of the Ubisoft press conference is Splinter Cell. I'd love to see a new Splinter Cell, man. Come on. Please. Dude. Dude. Splinter Cell, man. Let's get it. Right? So, pretty much, to be honest with you, that really does it for me when it comes to Ubisoft. Because, look, we ain't going to see Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah? We ain't going to see any kind of games like that. Because I think they put out, like, um, a tweet or there was some type of information go around, which, you know, it's kind of obvious, that, that Beyond Good and Evil is still in very, very early stages of development. I don't know how... Something that has been announced years ago and some content was shown for it is years out. But, you know, whichever. Yeah. So, I don't know about that game. So, I don't really want to address it. What I can see are the games that I mentioned. Splinter Cell and Far Cry 6. I'd love to see those games. Yeah. Now, let's look at... Now, there's two companies that could steal E3. Number one, Xbox and Bethesda, or Microsoft and Bethesda. 
they could absolutely blow everything out of the water. Bosh! In one go. Yeah, although the Bethesda showcase is going on on the 13th of June. Today is the 12th of June. Alright. So what I um, would be cool to see, maybe Gears of War 6. Yeah, and I talk about no stinking CG trailer. I don't want to see. No, this is the reason why I don't like E3. Because E3 is just synonymous with empty promises, fake demos, fake CG movies, CG movies, and gameplay that is not even a real gameplay that even remotely re uh, represents the final product. And that's the reason that I'm done with E3. I'm done with it. Yeah. So if we see Gears of War 6, that'd be really cool. That'd be really interesting. Yeah. Also, um, Halo Infinite. Yeah. That's a game that we definitely are going to see. 100%. Because what we have to realise and remember is... The whole gaming industry as a whole, yeah, has changed. You know, the shit house that was 2020, yeah, that shit house year, man, right? It showed everybody, because we were all in lockdown, I think everybody has developed a awakening to media and entertainment within your home because i'll be honest myself personally i have the internet but i never looked at the internet the way i looked at the internet before the plethora of information that you can get from the internet i never noticed it Social media, I'll be very honest with you, I've had, I have social media, but I've never looked at social media, not really, until this bullshit pandemic era that we're going through, right, the C-virus era, yeah, I've never really paid attention to anything, movies, I watch movies, but I've never submerged myself in movies, anime, gaming and media, and it's just gave me time to understand, learn and develop certain things and understanding of aspects of the world and the, like the whole world actually. Not just what happens in the UK, but everywhere. And I just feel like I've become enlightened, which I think everybody has become enlightened. And there are certain inadequacies within society that have been exposed right so it's like really fascinating and one of the things that has come out of it is gaming gaming has come out as a mvp for saving people's um sanity you know giving people something to do enjoying it submerging their their conscious thoughts into a fantasy world or whatever you're doing so I think gaming, the stock for gaming, shot right up. But also, a lot of games have been put on hold, yeah? And the reason I say that, yeah, is because I think it was last year, but there was like a Microsoft leak, right? And then you saw that there was a massive list of games that were redacted from March of 2020. There was a couple games in February 2020. There was a massive list of games in 2020, December. And there was, um, there was like a game in November 2020 and another game in August of 2020 that were all redacted because of the C-Virus. So these are games that they really wanted to show us in 2020. But nobody understood what was going on with the world. And how games, movies, survival, to be honest with you, was going to go. Right? So 
a lot of development, yes, has been slowed down, but a lot of development has also been given an extra year. And an extra year of development without the pressure of having to show a trailer, you know, for like stock and shareholders and people to invest and interest to be generated for their game. The C virus has dissipated all of that. So this year, we are going to get an absolute barrage of games. Do not be surprised if this month of June, slash ETH of gaming, slash E3, we are going to get hit with so many trailers, so much content, so much information. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous, right? So yeah, I just wanted to give that context in terms of what I was saying, yeah? Like, for example, Halo Infinite. Like, that trailer that they showed was an absolute joke, bro. Absolute joke. And then afterwards, it's come out that it was an absolute disaster. You have devs leaving, directors of the game leaving left, right, and said, oh, they have no direction. It was basically a sham. It was embarrassing. Yeah, but it kind of... It explained why the game, the trailer that they showed, just looked like an absolute joke. Right? That game has been given a little bit extra time to clean it up. Let's see what they're going to show us in this E3. And they will show Halo Infinite. They 100% will. They have to. Yeah? There's also, I hear like they're going to be, they might be showing Perfect Dark, which I'm, look, I'm interested in, man. Let's get it. Let's get some Perfect Dark, man. Because I remember Perfect Dark from when I was a kid, right? So, yeah, I'd be very interested to see that, like a brand new version of it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. And, you know, we've got to also remember that a lot of studios were purchased by um, Microsoft. Yeah, that we've not heard about, right? They've com been completely out of the picture because of, you know, the shithouse that was 2020, yeah? So, yeah, I want to see what's going to happen with a lot of Microsoft and um, Xboxes, studios. What's going to come of it? Uh, what are they going to blow our minds with? So, hopefully... They can show us something that is going to absolutely just blow our minds, right? Because also we got to remember is they are with Bethesda, yeah? Now, when we look at Bethesda, I want to see some more Deathloop, bro. I'm excited for that game. Deathloop looks godlike. And they also delayed that game because they want to put that extra polish on it. Man, I love that. Because the game already looks good. But it looks like it could be better. Right? And they are, and they kind of actually see that. Right? So I'm happy that they say that, that look, we're going to rush it out. We're going to wait a little bit. Put some extra time. We've got some more ideas. We're going to polish that game up. Super polish. You know, because since the death loop was being made... The acquisition of Bethesda was made by Microsoft. So now there's a lot more money in that company. So maybe, no, def definitely, Microsoft are basically saying, what games have got the most promise? What games have we got going on right now? Do you guys need extra time? Do you need extra help? What's going on, people? And they looked at Deathloop and said, you know what? You need more resources. You got it. We believe in you. We know what you can do. You got it. I love that. I'm so happy about that. So yeah, that's Death Loop. Oh, it would be so awesome if they were to give us a new Wolfenstein. I would absolutely love that. Bro, if they show us a new Wolfenstein trailer, bro, that's going to be mad. That's going to be mad. And they go back to Blaskovich. 
man, I'll, I'll be so excited to see that. Um, I mean, the one with the daughters, I mean, it was a good game. But the thing is with it, the story was just so, it was so dotted, man. There was like maybe two or three story cutscenes in the whole game, bro. They were long, but they were too far and few between. As I said, literally like three or four, if even that, man. So, I don't know, man. It would be awesome to see a new Wolfenstein and they go back to Blaskovich. If they are going to do the daughters, I won't, I won't mind. I really won't if they decide to go with the, the, the daughters, Blaskovich daughters again. But they've got to come with a proper Wolfenstein story, bro. Of violence and just packed with story, man. No shortcuts. No trying to say we're trying to make this for the speedrunning community or we've noticed that people don't play our games all the way through to the end so we're trying to make a short game. Nah. Look at what made your other Wolfensteins good. And follow that. Follow that, bro. So yeah, I'm excited. Hopefully we'll see that. And then of course we're going to see uh, Starfield. Yeah, look man, they will 100% show that game. They have to show that game. There's no doubt about it. Right? Look, man. Microsoft, Bethesda. As I said, they could absolutely blow everything and anything out of the water. Yeah? And then there is one other monster. Capcom. That company, bro has turned, that is, it has gone from a wet fish. A soggy, wet fish. That doesn't really make any sense, to be honest with you, hear myself say it, but whatever, let's go with it, yeah? Into a giant, colossal, killer whale, bro. Resident Evil 7, Monster Hunter World. Um, Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3, Monster Hunter Rise, come on dude, Resident Evil 8, man, one after the other, they're coming with, um, what is it, Monster Hunter Stories, they are just going 1, 2, 3, uh, banger after banger after banger dude, crazy. What the hell is going on with Capcom? They are like the only company. There's another company, Squaresoft, um, Square Enix. Yeah. I can't believe I called them Squaresoft. <laughs> they are the only other company that have not disappointed me. In terms of gaming. Capcom and Square Enix. Everything else disappointed me. Disappointed me. Well, no. Persona Royale. I was very happy with that game. That game did not disappoint me. So I can't say that. Right. And there was another game that was released. That was not Final Fantasy. It was not Square Enix. And was not. Yes. All them other games, bro. Like Cyberpunk and Marvel Avengers. Just straight disappointments. Like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. But Capcom. I want to see what they're going to bring, bro. I need to see it. Because they, you know that, I mean, look, they've already, <laughs> they've already thrown so much at us, man. But believe it or not, I feel like they've got more, bro. What if they were to show us some new um, Resident Evil 8 DLC? That would be crazy. Dragon's Dogma 2, bro. And you know they're making Dragon's Dogma. And they have been quiet for a hot minute, bro. They've been super quiet, working hard, grinding. Nose to the grindstone, bro. They ain't trying to say nothing. Ain't putting out no trailers. Ain't doing no hype. Literally, I think all they did was at Christmas, um, my man, it's no 
put out like a tweet of him and the whole development team and saying thank you to everybody for your support with our games we're having a wonderful um holiday and we're working really hard on our new project that was it i like it man if we see dragon's dogma 2 oh my god dude mate they could steal it they could steal e3 bro really so i'm so as i said i'm really excited about that uh, it'd be, as I say, it would be awesome to see maybe some Resident Evil, some Dragon's Dogma. Definitely going to see some Monster Hunter Rise in there. I don't think they're going to show us any kind of DLC with Monster Hunter. Um, yeah, with Monster Hunter Rise. Maybe there might be a new DLC monster trailer they might show. But definitely going to see Monster Hunter Stories 2. We're going to see some type of content from that game. But anything else could be a surprise, right? Because if you remember, there was a leaked list, right, of Capcom games. And one of the games in that leak was Street Fighter VI. That was scheduled for um, 2022. I don't know, man. I don't know. But there were a lot of games on that list, right? So we'll see. That was scheduled for 2022. So let's wait. But as I said, Capcom, that company is just an absolute juggernaut right now. Well done to Capcom for turning it round, right? Right. So now we have Square Enix. And Square Enix, we definitely know that they're going to show... The Marvel Avengers game. Which they're most probably going to show the Black Panther expansion. And that thing looks godlike, bro. That thing looks ridiculous, dude. Look, ain't nobody got no time for Marvel Avengers, man. They put out any kind of trailer, any type of information about that game. Look, even on their main channels that have got millions, tens of millions of followers... And people that watch their videos, yeah, like uh, 100,000, 70,000, 50,000 views, if even that. Now, they put out a trailer for the Black Panther expansion for Marvel Avengers. Bro, that video got like 3.5 million views inside of 12 hours, bro. Inside of 12 hours, Marvel Avengers got 3.5 million views, bro. Because the trailer looked godlike. It's just such a shame that it's a garbage game, bro. But, but, let's see what's going to happen with this Black Panther expansion. Because I think if they can get that right, bro, I'm back on it for sure. 100%. I'm on it. Alright. Another thing that I think they're going to do on this. Because a game called Guilty Gear Strive was just released yesterday. Officially. It's been out since the 8th of June. But you can, only if you pre-order it digitally. I get the Deluxe Edition or the Ultimate Edition. Right? So you get early access to it. Which I think is bullshit. But then on the 11th. Which was yesterday. It came out officially for everybody. They might show a trailer for one of the characters, uh, the DLC characters. So that's something that might come out, right? Uh, we're probably going to see a trailer from Street Fighter Five for Akira. That definitely could happen, right? So, yeah, those are just some games that we think definitely know that are coming from Square Enix. Uh, probably going to do some more Final Fantasy interlude. Right, um, maybe like a trailer from that because look, it ain't gonna hurt. The game just came out yesterday, I think it was. So, yeah, that's gonna be cool. I don't really, to be honest with you, honestly, don't really care about Final Fantasy Interlude. Uh, don't really care about Jack and Dexter. Is it Jack and Ratchet and Clank? Sorry, don't really care about Ratchet and Clank that, that have just come out on the PS5, right? Because I don't have the PS5, so I don't have access to it. And if I don't have access to something and it's out of my reach. I don't care about it. I really don't pay any attention to it. When I get a PS5, I'm on it. Until then, 
that thing pretty much doesn't exist to me. Sorry, that's just how I am, right? So yeah, we've got that. And there is another game that we definitely know they're going to show. It's a game called Babylon Fall. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to reserve my judgment for that game. Because the game, look, from what they showed from before, it looked, looked good, looked all right. Polish, keyword, polish, right? If they can polish it up, that game could be a hit, right? So I'm definitely excited to see that. Um, and yeah, I think that's all we really know that is coming from Square Enix. Marvel Avengers, the Black Panther expansion DLC, and Babylon Fall. Right, I think they're going to do something with Life, Life is Strange or something like that. Right, but to be honest with you, I don't really know about that game nor care about that game. So, people that do, happy for you. you got something to look forward to extra there. And yeah, I think that's it. And then we do have Nintendo, yeah? Nintendo are going to be doing a little extra something, yeah? And I think Nintendo's one is probably just going to be showing like the Switch Pro. Come on, bro. they got to show Bayonetta 3. They've got to show Bayonetta. They can't. They can't be holding out anymore, man. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. This has got to be the year for Bayonetta 3. Let's go, man. Let's do it. So, yep. I would say be very ready and have your minds ready to be blown because we are going to get hit with an absolute tsunami of gaming trailers and content, right? Uh, and an um, honourable mention, yeah, is to, I hope that we see um, gameplay from the Tiny Tina. This is from um, Gearbox, yeah? I hope that they show the Tiny Tina Wonderlands gameplay. Man. I'm into it. I like um, Tiny Tina. And they're smart, man. I think they got their ears to the ground, man. Because the best thing other than Maya in Borderlands 2 was the, the um, Tiny Tina's uh, the Dragon Keep DLC. That DLC to this day, one of the best DLCs I have ever played. That DLC was pretty much an entire game in itself. I have played full price games that have got less content than that DLC for that game. Bro. Bro. Look, man. Tiny Tina. Wonderlands, the girl gets her own game, bro. Not even DLC, her own game? Mad. Mad. So I, I wish, I hope that they show some gameplay for that. But Gearbox is getting its own showcase? So they've got to be showing a little bit more than Tiny Tina. Because it doesn't say um, take to interactive, right? It says gearbox. I'm into it. So Warriors, that's all I really want to say about the summer, June summer gaming slash E3 2020. That was my hype, interest in what's going to be happening, what's going to be coming. I want to know what you guys are excited for, what you guys are looking forward to. Do you agree with what I think about the games that are coming and my expectations? If not, let me hear it in the comment section, man. You know, and I'm always here, I'm always talking, I'm always watching. So yeah, Warriors, as I said, once again, thanks for liking, sharing, subscribe my videos. I appreciate you guys more than you ever could know. And um, yeah, I'm going to be back doing reactions to um, trailers and everything that comes out. Art Warriors, take care.